Today I'm going to walk you through rejetting the 3236 Weber carburetor. This isn't intended to be a how-to on how to actually change the jets, but more on how to select jets other than the original ones that come in the carburetor. I installed this on my car. It ran, but ran very poorly. I followed the directions that came with the kit on lean best idle and setting idle speed and it seemed like no adjustments I made made any difference. I knew that the car was extremely rich uh, so I knew that something had to change. Um, you know of course these carburetors can be very finicky from what I've been told when they're set up properly they work great. Right now it just seems like climbing a mountain to get it to work great. Uh, so we're going to make some changes. The out of the box, the, the Weber is going to come pretty standard. The choke side here, that's your primary, this is your secondary. Up top you have your primary and secondary air jets. Your main jets are in the bowl. And then your idle jets are on the sides. Out of the box, your primary main is going to be a 137. Your primary air, 165, and your idle, 60. Your secondary main is a 125, 160 on the secondary air, and 50 on the secondary idle. Now one thing that, although this does make it run, it's running really rich, extremely rich. And also, when the choke's open and it's, you engage the I can't really, second butterfly, it backfires. I kind of figured it might be an ignition timing thing, but the more I read, the more I thought about it, it makes sense when the secondary opens, airflow, as far as velocity going in the intake, slows down. And with the primary and secondary jets being so close together, it's starving for fuel. Now, in, this, in the stock configuration, I had a nine and a half to one air to fuel ratio. Um, which of course dumped a whole lot of extra gas into my crankcase, about two quarts. And that was just idling, tinkering, playing with it, moving it in and out of the shop. So I can't imagine how bad it could have been if I went to drive it. Of course, it, wa it would have washed out, it would have ruined the motor. We don't want that. So we're gonna, like I said, make some changes. So we'll start with the uh, with the idle jets, and, and this is just based on some advice that I, you know, read on the internet. So you kind of take this with a grain of salt. I'm basically at sea level. The information that I got kind of pertains more to that. Um, so, you know, take it as guidelines. You can always try it. Maybe it'll make your situation better or it'll at least give you, you know, an idea of which direction you need to go with some of the jets. Now, one of the first recommendations was 
actually just swapping the idle jets from side to side. Um, so we didn't, I didn't have to buy uh, any new jets there. I think I bought an extra uh, idle jet, a 45, um, just in case there was some, uh, in case it seemed like it would be advantageous to have that little bit, because the jets, I got them from Pegasus Racing, they're about seven bucks a piece. So it wasn't wasn't bad. Okay. Now what we're gonna be doing is uh, we're gonna drop the air a little bit on the primary, and we're gonna drop the fuel, you know, the the main jet. We're gonna drop that size too. Okay. And then we're going to increase the size for uh, both the secondaries. So, and I got uh, the size up, the size down for this stuff. Just so I could uh, have a little bit of tunability. Now I am taking my, since my stock secondary uh, air jet is a 160, I'm going to take that, I'm going to put that in my primary, okay? Then I'm going to bump up the secondary to a 180. You don't have to get these very tight. You can strip them out. Like I said, the primary we're dropping, we're dropping down. Okay, we had a 137 from the factory. I'm gonna drop mine down. To a 125 because well I don't want to go too low because I still want to leave some uh, adjustability with the mixture screw my mixture screw was completely unresponsive uh, with the with the original jetting And I'll actually, uh, you know, at the end of this video, um, after I put it back on the car, I'll uh, let you see what the air fuel ratio is after all this. And then we can kind of take that and extrapolate whether or not we went the right direction with these jets. Now you can buy just a jet kit. There's uh, several vendors out there that will kind of give you a jet kit um, you know, based on where you live, what type of motor you have. So you can always uh, consult those guys that have a lot more experience on this. Um, I just I really want to learn more about the black magic of these things. Of course, these are at a awful angle. There we go. As far as I have researched the emulsion tubes that come in 
these carburetors we don't need to do anything with. We may need to, there may, I've, I've read that you can get air leaks here out of the uh, idle jets and there's recommendations on uh, putting an o-ring at the at the base of the uh, jet holder so you'd be putting an o-ring right there <clears throat> I'm gonna test it out like it is just see what it does in theory, of course it's still going to run, but in theory this will be a little more what we're after. Obviously it was way too rich uh, with the jetting before, so taking out, we know that the primary had to go down. The advice on increasing the secondary just seems logical. To make sure, you know, because you, by the time the secondary is open, you're going close to full throttle and you want that extra fuel. Now, if you're putting one of these on your vehicle, uh, definitely invest in an air fuel gauge. Um, I went, I, at first, I didn't have one on the car and I was messing with the, uh, with the with the mixture screw <clears throat> and I had no idea if I was doing anything good or not so it's a pretty invaluable resource to uh, to have on your car there's lots of companies out there um, if you like the look of it I highly recommend the uh, AEM uh, air fuel gauge because it is completely painless to install, just a uh, five volt fused switched power and ground is the the minimum that you need. Of course, you also expand it to like a data logger and stuff. You know that it it just it just works. There's no uh, you know calibration or anything like that. It's already uh, ready to go out of the box. So, but there, there's other, other ones out there if you, if you prefer something else, but hopefully this will get us where we need to be. Uh, of course, I'm, I'm sure you know to, uh, adjust your mixture screw right there. But I'm, I'm going to start out one and a half yeah one and a half turns out uh, from my baseline installation um, and we'll just kind of see what it does from there hopefully this will get me a lot closer um, of course, I hope this helps somebody out there that uh, is fighting one of these. I saw a lot of people on the internet that were uh, having the same problems that I were and really didn't have any type of solution. So, hopefully this helps you. So after putting the carb on uh, that I rejetted last night, um, it was actually running a little lean. So instead of the 125 on the primary, the primary main, uh, I switched it to the 130. And uh, now I was actually able to adjust idle and the mixture screw uh, to get where I am now. Uh, I haven't done a cold start with it yet, uh, but I imagine it's probably gonna be all right. So this is definitely promising. Um, give it a try. Hopefully it works for you.